Welcome to Terribly Accurate and to the month of March. In this video, we are going to look at the overall vibe for the month. Will you find your pot of gold? Are you gonna get lucky in love? Where do you need to push your luck to get ahead? What rain will be hitting your life what will the rainbow after be? And then if you stick around all the way to the end of the video, you will find out what is your crystal of the month and what is it good for? How's it gonna help you? As well as figuring out how you can get a free reading from me. This video is for Aries. Sun, moon, rising, but not Venus. Unless you are spying on somebody else's um, love forecast, for example, then it's for their Venus. But this video right here is going to show you how to get the most out of these videos that I make or that anybody else makes for taroscopes, horoscopes, whatever, or even ones that you would read online. And one more thing, there are links below to connect you to the taroscopes that I've been making online for all zodiac signs. And now let's get started. Aries, your overall vibe for this month is that you gotta focus on the positive and not on the negative. They're like, look, this is you, you know, trying to focus on the positive instead of the negative because if it were the other way around, you'd be really focused there. And it's like, you're trying your best, okay? But you still end up like kind of bummed out, like not much to celebrate, like it is a stretch. Okay, so it's like one of those things, maybe your arm gets cut off and you're like, I know, I gotta be celebrating the fact that my other arm is still here, but it's fucking hard without my other, with that, without that first arm, you know? Like I'm trying to stay positive, but man, it is rough. So I'm not saying your arm's gonna fall off. I just use extreme examples because they're memorable. The point is, is that, you know, even though you're trying, it's gonna be a little difficult this month. Is that something that's astrological or is that something, you know, that you can control? And they're just like, look, that's karma. So it's not that, you know, you earned this point in time, but like whatever is bugging you right now, you had something to do with it either now or in a past life. So, you know, right now, if you're upset because your partner left you and you're trying to see like the positive, like now I'm single and now I can be in a better relationship. Um, maybe it was your fault that it ended because you were not attentive enough or because you cheated or something horrible, you know, or for example, maybe um, you did everything right and then it just had to end because now the universe is going to give you something better something lovelier something that you actually deserve you know there's this element of sort of like karma like justice will be served so if things feel shitty right now they're probably going to get better unless you really majorly kind of created this consequence for yourself um in which case it will get better eventually but they're saying like see look you're not stuck to it forever, but they're like, you know, there's not much you can do about it right now. Unfortunately, like some things just are not for you, you know, whether that's relationships or jobs or whatever. And so, yeah, like that sucks. It's kind of sad, but like, don't let it ruin your Aries confidence. Like you should still be super confident and assured that like things are going to go your way, that there's going to be opportunity for you, that people like you, that you're attractive, that you're funny, that you're smart, like all of these awesome things about the Aries clan you know you can have a healthy little dose of suspicion like just that little cat's worth but the majority of you should feel confident about the future and that things are going to get better even though it's hard maybe right now in the beginning of march okay so um will you find your pot of gold this month you know what do your finances look like and what they say is it's not going to be 100 percent what you want it's not going to be like you x marks the spot and you just get off the pirate ship and you find the treasure however they're like you know even though things take longer than we want it doesn't mean that we're not ever going to find them for some of us it might mean that but for others of us no they're like there's just really nothing you can do about it right now it's just the situation like maybe the economy just is what it is and it's not favoring you right now and i mean that's unfortunate it doesn't necessarily mean anything's going to go wrong but it's like this is going to make you really concerned about you know should i take certain opportunities that are presented to me or not and then furthermore it might kind of close you off from even noticing that there are opportunities for you 
um, you're going to be kind of in this like bunker down and save mode, which isn't a bad thing. But there, like, remember that you have a choice here to open your eyes and see opportunities that present themselves to you, so you can take advantage of them. And then also, you know, as you're saving money, are you doing it in pursuit of something? Like, do you truly believe you can, or are you doing it from fear? Because if we're doing it from fear, we're creating resistance energy from what we actually want per like the universe and the law of attraction. Okay, so keeping that in mind. Um, will you get lucky in love if you are single? And they're like, again, very karmic energy. Um, things are going to kind of balance themselves out, work themselves out. But if you're taking a rest from dating, that's actually okay right now. That's probably the best plan so that um, you can be like really fully rested and alive when this new relationship shows up for you that's deeply bonded emotionally and super connected. And so they're like, you know, make sure you're getting enough sleep, enough rest, so you look like doe-eyed and fresh as a daisy so this person can show up. If you also have Scorpio in your chart, this is fantastic news because they also have that soulmate forever person kind of relationship stuff coming for single Scorpio. So anyone with Scorpio and Aries, oh my goodness, this might be the month that it happens for you. Um, they're saying like it might kind of feel unlucky at the beginning of the month but as we move through the month they're like if you can really think about what is it i want in relationships what kind of relationship do i visualize and desire for my future and you stay focused on that it can happen for you but if you're a negative nilly and you don't believe it then you will be one of the areas in which it doesn't happen for okay so if you're manifesting it you're probably going to get it now for those of you who are coupled aries what's up they're saying you're not very Aries-ish this month, you're not totally in control, but this is good because you're open to receive love from your partner in ways that you haven't before. You kind of notice more, even if they don't speak your love language. This is the kind of month where you can kind of just sit back and allow your partner to do a lot of the work, to show a lot of love and affection and attention. And then also in the bedroom where you just get to lay there and then, you know, it's enjoyable for both of you. You don't have to do all the work. <laughs> So that's kind of exciting if you're kind of lazy. They're like, you should feel really confident this month if you are in a coupled relationship. Now, if you're in a it's complicated kind of relationship where it's on again, off again, or you're talking to somebody new and it's not Facebook official yet, um, what does that look like? And they're saying, feel confident about it, that healthy little tiny dose of suspicion, also good. But generally, they're looking at you as like very sexy and smart and funny and bright and shiny. Like you're just like a beacon for partners this month, even if you're not trying to be, right? Even if you want nothing to do with dating this month, it's like other people just see you, they notice you. You walk into a room and you might have not even brushed your hair yet, but you fucking glow and people are into it and so they're like you know because it, it's the little details the little nuances of who you are like how you walk what your voice is like how you know the cadence of your voice your posture like all these different little things so that's kind of cool so love looks good for all Aries no matter who you are or what your situation so where in your life do you need a, to push your luck a little bit where do you need to kind of co-create whatever it is you're trying to manifest and they're like we don't really have much to tell you. You're not ready to hear it yet, so you don't even have to do anything. Well, okay, I guess that makes that easy. Um, is there any rain that will be coming that we can serve as like a warning? And they're just like, you know what? You don't have to commit to things. Don't commit to things and this month if you don't have to. Um, this is not a good month for marriage proposals. This is not a good month for signing contracts, signing a new lease, which also you shouldn't be doing in the first place because you might be watching this in the very beginning of March where it's still Mercury retrograde and it's not a good time to commit to new things or in the shadow period halfway through where it's still kind of Mercury retrograde up and down effects. So I think that would carry through the majority of March. Now, what will the rainbow be for you? You know, after the rain clears, what's the reward for you? And they're like, holding on to things you care about and love is the biggest thing. They're saying especially, like, but not money. Because this card also came up earlier and they were like, hey, you might want to be saving your money a little bit. And they're like, we're not talking about money here. We are talking about the things that we're grateful for, like how we started, right? Very, very beginning theme. It's like, 
what is it that I appreciate? What's going right? What are the things that I really desire and care about? You know, that concept of like you lose your arm, but it's like, oh yeah, I still got this other one over here and that's important too. And you know, I'm really thankful I have that. The more that we express gratitude for what it is that um, we have, the more we get things that we want and the longer we get to keep the things that we appreciate in our life. And so if that's kind of challenging, there's a link below in the description box that um, will point you to an exercise that will really, really help you to practice that um, when gratitude is hard. And so now we're gonna switch gears and we are gonna look at your power crystal of the month, Lapis Lazuli. Lapis Lazuli crystals are safe to cleanse in cold water and salt water you can bury it in the ground. You can cleanse this stone with incense, moonlight, and you can also recharge it with sunlight. There are many angels associated to Lapis Lazuli. These angels are Archangel Michael, Raziel, and Zadkiel. The obvious chakra associated with Lapis Lazuli is the throat chakra because it is blue. However, it is also associated with the third eye chakra, the purple one between your eyebrows because of its psychic enhancement abilities. Lapis lazuli increases wisdom, kindness, love, peace, harmony. It protects you against negative energies just as a root chakra, black colored or gray colored crystal would do. It gives you clarity. It helps you to feel more open-minded. It increases your imagination. It increases your clear thinking, your self-awareness, as well as your psychic vision. Lapis lazuli can also assist with your vision, with your physical vision as well, increasing your eyesight as well as your vision for the future. Lapis lazuli opens up your throat chakra and so it helps you to express any repressed anger that you have that creates communication blockages in your life. As it opens up that third eye chakra, as it decalcifies that pineal gland, it will expand all of your senses. So you might have a sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth sense that is new to you and increases your psychic abilities. Lapis lazuli will connect your heart and your head and therefore it creates balance but it can also create interdependence in relationships which is good if your relationship is healthy however if you are already in an abusive codependent type of relationship this just might further strengthen that bond and make it harder to leave. In other regards, because it is connecting the heart and the head to create that balance, you might just find that it is time to walk away. It will vary in how it plays out for each individual as they use this stone. Lapis lazuli often creates a rebirth of the inner divine nature of a person. It encourages us to face our dark side, to look at what illusions or lies that we tell ourselves, and then also to deal with anything that we have repressed deep into our subconscious. So when we're using lapis lazuli, we might want to use it in small doses because it will kind of resurface our past traumas, our repressed memories, and our emotional wounds. So while it does help us, while it does help us in healing those things and liberating ourselves from these past issues, it is also a difficult stone to work with over extended periods of time and might be better in small doses for the majority of people. Lapis lazuli does help us to express our emotions in a healthy way and it increases our concentration and our mindfulness. From a physical perspective, lapis lazuli can help combat dizziness. It can help eliminate anxiety and stress. It supports your digestive system as well as your thyroid because it is associated to that throat chakra. When using lapis lazuli, you might have increased physical energy. And as mentioned before, because it does treat your physical vision, it might also treat other eye problems, especially cataracts. A tip when going to the doctor's office is to bring your lapis lazuli stone along with you because sometimes it does yield more accurate diagnoses and therefore better treatment plans for whatever might be going on with you. This stone is particularly effective when placed on the face in that third eye chakra zone, especially for that repressed trauma stuff and the blockage stuff 
as well as that psychic development, but it is also useful on the throat chakra as well, especially if you're going to be trying to treat your thyroid and achieve balance there, you would wanna place it on your skin there. It is safe to put on the skin. A fun fact about lapis lazuli is that ancient Egyptians, ancient Egyptians really cherished this stone. You'll see it in museums all of the time um, that feature artwork or different artifacts from the ancient Egyptian times. They used to work with this a lot, as far back as 5000 BC. Mm -hmm.